Hello, you're listening to Yellow King Film Boy. Robert De Niro has had a good year. He's been in the amazingly successful Joker movie and recently in Martin Scorsese's gangster epic The Irishman. It could be argued The Irishman is the best film De Niro has starred in since Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown back in 1997. De Niro is a film icon, make no mistake. His career in the 70s and 80s are the stuff of legend. His performances in Taxi Driver, Deer Hunter, Raging Bull and The Godfather Part 2, to name just a few, brought a new level of intensity to the screen and rightfully cemented him as one of the greatest actors of all time. Over the last couple of decades, De Niro has not slowed down. He has appeared in plenty of films, many of them being comedies. Unfortunately, the quality of many of the films in which De Niro has made an appearance have been somewhat lacklustre. His television appearances talking about Trump have gotten more headlines than his movies in recent years. I mean, he's so blatantly stupid. He's a punk, he's a dog, he's a pig, he's a con, a bull artist, a mutt. Yet in 2019, De Niro has had a resurgence and his name is back in the headlines for the right reasons. De Niro's filmography has seen him star in over 100 movies. That's a lot of movies. We all know the famous films, but what are his most underrated films? The films that were commercially unsuccessful but were still really great. What are the movies that slipped under the radar and did not get the attention they deserved? First on the list is Jackknife. It stars De Niro and Ed Harris as two Vietnam vets who are both traumatized from their experiences in Vietnam but deal with it very differently. Dave, Ed Harris, lives with his sister Martha, played by Kathy Baker. Dave spends his nights trying to forget his trauma by drinking himself into oblivion while his sister is his support system, putting dinner on the table for him every night and basically their situation has degenerated into a lifeless habit of stagnation. Then into their lives comes Megs, Robert De Niro, who attempts to get his friend out of the depressive, drunken circle he has trapped himself into and finds himself falling for Dave's sister, Martha, much to his friend's disapproval. Jackknife is a brilliantly observed, unshowy piece of work, a meaningful character-driven study with actors on top of their game. Think of it as a companion piece to the deer hunter, examining the devastating effects on a person after the Vietnam War. Mad Dog and Glory was released in 1993 by director John McNaughton, famous for his film Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. It tells the story of a shy, socially inept police crime scene photographer who is named Mad Dog sarcastically by his police colleagues in reference to his mild and meek demeanour. Mad Dog saves the life of a gangster boss, Milo, played by Bill Murray, during a hold-up in a convenience store. In return, Milo offers Mad Dog a gift. The gift comes in the form of Glory, a barmaid at Milo's club, played by Uma Thurman. She can stay with De Niro for a week to give him her personal services, but the arrangement becomes complicated when the mismatched duo fall in love. De Niro was originally offered the role of gangster Milo, but decided to play the timid Mad Dog instead as it was going against type. Martin Scorsese also produced the film, which makes it a rare collaboration between De Niro and Scorsese, where Scorsese does not direct. New York Times said of the movie, The great satisfaction of Mad Dog and Glory is watching De Niro and Murray play against type with such invigorating ease. It is a pleasurably offbeat picture that manages the rare trick of being both charming and edgy. The film's budget was 19 million and performed very poorly at the box office, only making 10 million, resulting in a 9 million loss. Why does a dog wag its tail? Because a dog is smarter than its tail. If the tail was smarter, the tail would wag the dog. Wag the Dog is a sharp political satire, released in 1998 and directed by Barry Levinson. The President of the United States is caught in a sex scandal, and he hires spin doctor Conrad Bream, played by Robert De Niro, to divert the public's attention away from the scandal. His job is to get the public to think about anything else, and he does. 
He enlists the help of a Hollywood producer played by Dustin Hoffman. Together they pull off the biggest distraction ever, an imaginary war against Albanian rebels. Why Albania? Why not Albania? Bream says, and then adds, war is show business. It could be argued this is the best political satire since Kubrick's Doctor Strangelove. The movie is now over 20 years old and yet it rings true more today than it did when it was first released. Both Hoffman and De Niro received no upfront salary for their work. Filming took only 28 days during a gap in the production of Levinson's Sphere. And yet this scathing satire is a far more accomplished work. If The Irishman seemed like it had a long running time, then you should check out 1900, Bernardo Bertolucci's 5 hour and 20 minute movie that covers approximately 70 years of Italian social and political history. This epic saga of a film is one of the strangest epics ever committed to celluloid and it has duly amassed a cult following as a result. The story follows two childhood friends who grow up as close companions despite their class differences. However, they drift apart as adults. Alfredo, played by Robert De Niro, embraces his land-owning heritage and Olmo, played by Gerard Depardieu, champions workers' rights. As the years go by, they see the rise of fascism in their country, and eventually their values find them directly in conflict. It also stars a young Donald Sutherland as a fascist leader who is beyond evil in this film. He really is a scene stealer. He'll do anything to get what he wants, including killing old women, children, and he even headbutts a cat to death. He has one particularly disturbing and controversial scene in the film which I saw as a child myself that deeply disturbed me at the time and that scene is now etched into my brain forevermore. Sutherland incidentally later claimed that he couldn't watch his own performance because it upset him so much. The film is a visual feast with many surreal moments like a child decorating his hat with live frogs and Depardieu breaking the fourth wall to address the audience of the virtues of communism. 1900 is known for being one of the longest commercially released films ever made. It premiered at the Cannes Film Festival in 1976 in its original 320 minute runtime, but was not well received. The film's distributor, Paramount, boycotted the film until Bertolucci eventually, reluctantly, cut the film down to a three hour version. And finally, we have Midnight Run. Yes, I know it's not really that underrated, but I believe De Niro's masterful performance in it perhaps is. The film was a success at the box office. It made about 50 million, which is no small change for 1988. In the film, De Niro plays bounty hunter Jack Walsh. It's a buddy cop style action comedy movie directed by Martin Brest, famous for making Beverly Hills Cop. It marked De Niro's first comedic role. He skillfully parodies his tough guy persona and switches from the comedic to contemplative with ease. The chemistry between him and the Duke, played by Charles Grodin, works so well it balances humor, pathos, anger and empathy, beautifully illustrated in the scene where Walsh is forced to pay a visit to his estranged ex-wife and teenage daughter. A daughter who he has not seen for years, it shows De Niro at his best. The comedy stops and the emotionally stunted Walsh is broken out of a tirade on seeing his daughter. De Niro's physical presence and demeanor in this scene is outstanding. It looks as if something inside breaks. It's unusual to see such high quality acting in an action comedy movie. Film reviewer Roger Ebert said of the film, what Midnight Run does with these two characters is astonishing because it's accomplished within the structure of an action comedy. It's rare for a film such as this to end with a scene of genuinely moving intimacy, but this one does and it earns it. So there are my five underrated Robert De Niro movies. Did I miss any obscure De Niro films out that you think should be on the list? What's your favorite Robert De Niro movie? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, cheers for listening. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you would like to be notified in the future next time I upload a video, click that notification bell. See you later.